And so whenever they transact business with you, no matter what your name, even if you're in your proper person, they will write it in capital letters, which takes it out of the natural state, which is uh, 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 grammatically incorrect, but you don't question it. And so they list you as a corporation which makes you taxable again. So then they tax you for transacting business and a corporation has to pay to be able to work, which is why you need licenses to work. They're revenue raisers, right? You are operating conceptually that this is supposed to be this way because this is government, you know, and you got paper. They don't really represent you, they're thieves. That take, took over your government. And, and then, as an example, you see the Constitution says, Article 4, Section 4 guarantees for every state in this union a Republican form of government. And then you turn around and you tell your children this is a, a democracy because the politician told you that. And you don't even challenge it even in your own mind. That's slavery. And it's a pact you just made with them. And so you've created, you've agreed to a fraudulent jurisdiction that they created. And then it makes it legal because you agree. Nationalization takes you out of that for the record. And puts you back on a solid rock or on a proper standing in your proper person. If you understand conceptually what that really represents, back to the nationality card. Your concept of mind makes that card operable, not the card. If you don't understand that conceptually, that card in any document you get is only a document of stuff. Man, this is deep. Yeah, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to make them do Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, it just means nothing. You go out there, and then all they need to do is challenge you on the nature of that brief. And they'll quickly understand that you don't understand it. You went to 7-Eleven copied it and some or somebody has sold this thing to you and, you and you're under the concept that inalienable rights can be sold to you in a package which immediately shows that you have no concept nor respect for governmental principles at that time it's rejected and you'll say oh man that failed I gotta go buy another paper and you get caught up in that paper chase when a real deal is if you understand what that really means in this concept, that's all the documents. All the documents peripheral to this are only supportive. They're supportive of the activation of this. This is passive, isn't it? And it's a statement that's on here, right? Passive. These lights. These glass chambers with this tungsten steel in it, et cetera, and um, enclosed electrons and activated mercury and stuff. You put electricity to it, negative and positive pole. Those electrons start bouncing around, heating up, and they create light, right? That's a vehicle for these chemical metal reactions and temperature reactions that create the light come from resistance, am I correct? But they themselves are passive. You must apply them for them to have meaning of existing. With, um, if the same metal that's there, same component parts are there, if that filament breaks, you toss it because it has no use because it itself has no value. What it does is the value. It itself has no value. What it does, if you're conscious, is the value. So the value is abstract. If you can take it from the physical, metaphysical, put it in the abstract, and then regurgitate it, then it lives. If you can't, your concepts are wrong, and you don't understand it. And not that you shouldn't have it, but you should have it because it belongs to you. But whoever gave it to you didn't tell you the truth. And it cannot be sold. And if they sell it to you, they robbed you. 
Do you understand? So, you, so somebody charged you a fee to do that? And then it costs finance for the transaction of this. <laughs> and so you receive it at cost. Okay. But there's no such thing as the function of this or this being sold for profit right. by some special guy. It says, you know, super duper Taji guy selling these things. No, it's bull. Don't, if somebody ever comes to you like that, don't, okay. don't even go for it. Because, you know, they're liars and they're thieves. Now, when you're in an organized order, wherein it deals with the function of your birthright, your dues, which is a, an agreed tax, supports your institution. From that is derived the cost that deals with your paperwork. There's no such thing that you come to me super duper god taji guy and I got some package to sell you that functions with execution of the function of your birthright. No, it's constitutions for that. All documents are in supportive or in support of our the enforcement of our constitution. And anyone that deals with the documents from government, etc., that doesn't recognize that or pretends they don't recognize that is a liar and a thief. Because they're already obligated to it. So even when you see um, political beings act like these documents, et cetera, are convoluted or they don't understand what they mean, they're lying. Because all of those documents are designed to call and demand the enforcement of our Constitution that all true American citizens have obligation to. And the judges of every state and the legislature and the judicial branch, et cetera, have obligation to uphold those principles. It is not a matter of their emotions, their beliefs, their religion, their choice. No religion, no religious test is required. This is the law supreme of the land. And you must understand that bringing you back here puts you back in the category of citizenship that you might receive your divine rights as citizens and your children also. And it is all already recognized. To that degree, it is incorporated into the government. Not incorporated to the negative that you don't understand or to some foreign incorporation. So do, do not confuse the incorporation of the United States Republic and the incorporated US corporations that, subser uh, that um, subvert the United States Constitution. And when you understand those principles, you can easily tell the difference. When you're dealing with people and they go into their conversations about these matters, if you understand the principles, you can easily tell when they get ready to deceive you. So it's important for you to understand those nuances. And it's important for you to understand what you have, what's here for you, so that you can understand when you receive it, what it is. You can read any document and also th therefore edit it. For instance, like you, um, you're just becoming conscious in certain levels. However, if your concepts are correct, even in a short period of time, I can give you any general lawful legal document. You can almost tell me what jurisdiction it belongs in, whether it's legitimate, whether it's not. You can break it apart, analyze it, change the words, go to the thes thesaurus, and substitute other words because the words should have been better chosen for it. You can also recognize when certain words were injected in it deliberately to deceive you, and you take nothing for granted. Do you understand? Because all law is specific. And again, we're geared to bring you to that level of consciousness, to free you from both us and that. And then we come together as free people and agree to the principles that our forefathers set up for a just and right social order, i.e., the United States of Morocco, which came out of constant wars between the Roman European nations and the Moorish Moabite nations. And they will be listed as Punic Wars, Christian Crusades, Battle of Tours near Poitiers, France, French Revolution, so-called American Revolution, and the enslavement of the Moors, and so-called Columbus defeating the Moors, I mean Queen Isabella, King Ferdinand defeating the Moors, and they finally come into the Western Hemisphere and colonizing the West, and then all of a sudden you got black people. Once you learn the truth, all that starts, what? The chronology starts having meaning to you. The relationship of all of that start has, starts having meaning to you. 
the motivations of politics has meaning to you. The motivations of certain political figures has meaning to you. You can tell what they're going to do before they do it. And you'll know why they do it. And you can project that they're going to do it. Because you already know that they're fixed. But you also know that the truth must be told in order to change. It doesn't change because people need to change. It changes because the truth comes out, if you understand. In other words, if the truth doesn't come, doesn't come out, things will stay the same, corrupt. But the truth in, in, in the nature of changing the mindset of people causes them to lose faith in the institutions because now they're starting to examine facts. And they don't give their energy anymore to the institutions. And just like any other corrupt plant, it dies for lack of water, lack of substance, because the vampire needs your blood to live. And if you stop giving them your blood, you understand the vampire will wither and die. Now that's the truth. And so when you start commanding the enforcement of our Constitution, the fraud that has veiled over it and pulled that cloud over it will begin to dissipate. Its power is not itself. Its power is your ignorance. Mm -hmm. And so back to the point, even when you look at the dollar bill and you look at the great seal that's on the dollar bill and you look at the flying bird with the, the um, olive branch in one hand and the arrows in the other hand, both war and peace. You know, when you begin to really understand all those symbols and you start uplifting those principles which are in favor of uplifting fallen humanity, all those warlike energies will fall. They are necessary because of the ignorance and because of the negative intent. And again, even back to the principle that most people don't even know that the United States has a dual seal. And does not represent the, both the positive and the negative, the higher self and the lower self? It does, doesn't it? But they're always there. It's not like one's going to disappear. What we have at this point is things are out of balance. We have to bring balance back. Balance has to be brought back. Peace has to be brought back because the falsehood must be dissipated. Once you understand that, you understand the value of that nationality card. You understand that when, when good astrologers come on the scene, and there's very few, all right? So you have good sorcerers, and you have negative sorcerers. Negative sorcerers have, have pretty much had control of everything. And so they have pretty much set these institutions up to their favor. And the world is in corrupt disarray. And so when you have good shaman come, like Nubudrali, their first mission is to kill them. When Yahshua come, their mission is to kill them. They already know what they're teaching. They already know where they're coming from. They don't need to begin to understand that. They play that game for the public. They already know what's up. They get rid of them because they know that they'll kill institutions if this truth gets out. Do you understand? As as example, just what you said. One of the issues when Yahshua was disputing with the doctors of the law, one of the first things that, that he did was turn over the table of the money changers to demonstrate to man, us, what is to be done with these institutions that we keep believing that's quote unquote leading us to God unqualified. Right? What do people do? Turn the tables back up and been putting money back on them ever since and then calling on Jesus to come rescue them. I mean, do you see the contradiction? Meaning that they didn't get the lesson. They missed it. Noble Dwali come and what is one of the things that he teaches? If you pay attention to the lessons Dwali teaches, his instructions bring you to fundamental truths yourself that removes the middleman. So now, if the middleman ain't there, he can't hinder you. That's why he tailored that circle seven. So tailored ancient literatures, tailored for you. Let's look at this other thing. 
Why were the doctors of the law so upset with Esau, with, G, with the, what people know as Jesus? He went to the scribes. He went to the pharaohs. He went to the Pharisees. He went to all those who had institutions, and he pleaded with them to tell the truth that they already knew, because they were deceiving the people. Oh, yes. Many of them agreed, but they never would do it, would they? Peace. Week after. Yes. Now, but what did he do? What is it that really pissed them off about Yahshua? And what did Yahshua do that really put a crimp in all their gears? What Yahshua did is he stopped arguing with the Pharisees. He stopped arguing with the doctors of the law. He stopped arguing with the Pharisees. He stopped arguing with the leaders. And he took the information directly to the common people. And when he did, the institution started collapsing. And so they set up his assassination. Which means all institutions live off the blood, the energies, off the common people. The truth and the lesson of Yahshua is this. Don't debate with those who should be telling. Take it to the people. Translate. No Dwali. In order to change the people, you must change their literature. That's the charge he made to the Moors. Another statement by Noble Drali. I may not take Islam across East State Street. Why do you think I'm teaching you? Pay attention to those things and then go back to that nationality card again. Break it down etymologically and in law and study behind it. Go into it. And then you can understand its function in society and you can understand why everybody's scared of it. Because as soon as the people begin to really understand what he did, the institutions will start collapsing and a new era will roll on in. It is no different than corruption runs for a time in civilization until it becomes such a burden on society that it collapses of its own weight. Truth accelerates it. That's why they're afraid of the truth. Other problem is, is that usually people who are suffering by it are the greater supporters of it, which is why, which is why it lives and why it's so hard to get it gone. Because they keep thinking, you got to tell Pharaoh, why don't he tell us these things? You, you, you see where I'm coming from? Now it goes back to the issue. Yahshua come amongst me, say, he said, I come amongst my own, and they receive me not. Meaning that truthfully, we're never left without instruction. The people are usually hard-headed hard, hard and rebellious. And it's not that they can't understand, because those who understand it can explain it. It don't need to be vague. What happens is people recognize that they're attached to institutions that have never did them any good, but they have their faith there. And they're willing to supplant their reasoning mind, reject the truth, in order to support institutions that they know are corrupt. And so the slavery goes on. That's all the problem is. People do not want change and they're afraid of change, but they want the benefit of change. And they will fund a feigned effort to change. But they don't want to clean no doo-doo up in their own yard. You know, and so they suffer. What happens then, it compounds itself and they pass it to their children. And then some of them come back as their children's children and don't know because they think they escaped this thing. And so we are our own mothers and fathers. We are our own ancients. And you know, the sooner we understand that this is a cycle, the sooner we'll be willing to fix this thing and stop messing around. You know, but it's really up to us. But back to the key with the nationality cards and we're gonna close out. The nationality card is 
the first document you get when you come into the movement that verifies that you are part of a nation, active and not passive. Act on it and begin, begin the processes of evolving into receiving your divine rights as citizens. Don't act on it and you may as well give it back and go back to the nigger state because just being more conscious is not good enough. And so when you understand the political threat to corrupt people, not to good people, to law breakers, not to law keepers, when you understand the threat that this, this is to corrupt organization, then you understand why very few people will talk about this properly or just refer it to as religion to give you a concept that is based in belief, which is dismissible. Do you understand? But when you understand that it's based in your unalienable rights, in your actual divine birthrights, that is recognized by all the governments of the planet, then your concepts start to change, don't they? And you start taking it more serious, don't you? Then you understand, not only do you have to bring our people into correction, you have the command of those who have been holding our seats of government to come correct. That's what the paperwork issuance is about. And the nature of it is in the nature of commanding and demanding that they uphold their oath, affirmation, sworn allegiance to uphold our divine constitution. Anything out side of those principles is a fraudulent jurisdiction. The problem that you see with Moors and other people that are having both lawful and legal problems relative to these matters, whether it's money or what they are calling law or processes, is actually being brought into fraudulent jurisdictions that are not lawful in the first place. Now, the problem with the masses of the people is being clear on what is what and who is who. Because all law is what? Specific. Specific. And so your concepts must be refined by that knowing. And you take nothing for granted. And so when you look at the um, principles of the three branches of government, the checks and balances, due process, the protections against bills of attainder, the protections against commands of spe uh, specific performance, the protections against such matters relative to um, indictments, proper procedures, Fourth Amendment issues, the First Amendments, which is the Bill of Rights, uh, the reasons of the, for the Declaration of Independence, encounter to laws or rules or of governance that are contrary to isonomy principles, you understand the reason for that Constitution. So to understand the reason for the Constitution, it is important to read the Declaration of Independence. It's also important to recognize that these documents did not originate with Europeans contrary to what your beliefs are. And once you understand that, the game for everybody that's been BSing is over. But then you must come into the light with a good heart yourself. You must not come in with the intent of practicing the corruption that they have correct practice. But you do observe what's going on. Islam, Queen. Um, um, so our salvation means when enough of us understand it to the point to overturn the existent state um, of mind. Right, within us first. Yes. When enough is collectively. It will occur by nature. because the battle is in the mind. It's the altar is the hearts and minds of men. And once you really understand that, you'll understand the power of the spoken word and the written word when properly delivered. And also why when Jwali set up this mission that he had a chosen full, a handful that are called adepts which means expert, and taught them most specifically those truths, the truth and the divine truth. And their delegated charge and authority is to see that it gets to the people. Well, 
the Judas factor kicked in. And here we are again. You know, so understand what the, the dynamics of what's happening. And don't be mad, don't be angry, observe. But if you understand the principles, then you know who's who. It's not, it's not, it's not, de it's not even debatable. See, it's like, you, you know, it's not a matter of you believing anyone. And I suggest you don't even accept what I say. But cross-examine it, critique it, analyze it. Prove it untrue, and then you'll prove it correct by trying to prove it untrue. You know, but then it'll cause you to have to rethink your position and decide whether you're brave enough to stand for the truth or whether you want to, you know, how do you say, jump back in the, in the crab basket? Because that's about what it is, and that's really what the nigger problem is. You know, and so in order to keep them calm, that's what they feed them religion to soothe them, to keep the natives from getting restless. Because the truth makes them recognize that rights are not given by governments. Rights are secured by governments because rights pre-exist divinely. And once you understand that, nobody can turn around and steal your rights, then turn around and sell it to you as a contract of privilege, and then say that you're breaking the law because you don't have a license to a right. Because you would understand without somebody having to explain it to you. Now that's the truth about your birth rights the quality of what constitutes a birthright. Do you understand it? Then you understand why they incorporated you as a, as a being. And it doesn't make corporation itself bad. It means understand what corporation is and understand when someone creates a corporation and tries to pull you into that jurisdiction whether or not you belong there or if you agree to it, i.e. whether you challenge that jurisdiction that they created. And what they did, they created Negro, black, and color, a set of Christian black codes from the church that set up a system in governance that dealt with the ch movement of these living beings, which is called chattel property, in a bureaucratic manner under wardship status, wards of the state, as stock being held by the European families with these Asiacs who bear their name, which indicates them as property. And all certifications, certificates, et cetera, relative to those matters are f liens are filed against it by the Europeans and therefore they can smile on your face and you never know they own you. And then when you get bad treatment, they give you an argument and that argument is called racism, prejudice and stuff and you arguing that and they really stole your birthright. And so when you really begin to understand this, then you go back to this nationality card again and understand that it takes you out of that status for the record, for the record. And back to what you're saying, when you get nationalized, that's supposed to be what? Registered not just in with the secretary in the temple, but periodically and on the cycles of those gates is supposed to be a representative of council who registers these things with the government in which you live. But you're supposed to also live life accordingly. I want to show you something. Look, look at this. Now, this is this is the more Holy Temple of Science. What you get in the science, more science temple. Now, remember what we talked about a little earlier, and you were saying, "Well, I asked them, and they said, now, now, this is the Constitution. All right. Now, I want you to tell me what this sounds like to you, right?" I'm going to go from Act 5. This organization of the Moorish Holy Temple of Science is not to cause any confusion or to overthrow the laws and constitution of the said government, but to obey hereby. 6. With us all members must proclaim their nationality, and we are teaching our people their nationality and their divine creed that they may know that they are a part and parcel of this said government and know that they are not Negroes, colored folks, black people, or Ethiopians, because these names were given to slaves by slaveholders in 1779 and lasted until 1865 during the time of slavery. But this is a new era of time now, and all men now must proclaim their free national name to be recognized by the government in which they live and the nations of the earth. This is the reason why Allah, the great God of the universe, ordained Nobudrali, the prophet, to redeem his people from their sinful ways, 
The Moorish Americans are the descendants of the ancient Moabites who inhabited the northwestern and southwestern shores of Africa. Does that sound like religious to you? Do you have common sense? Uh, you have a reasoning mind? You got a fundamental basic um, sense of governance over your grammar? Sentence structure, etc. Does it sound like worship or does it sound like a political action? 